You are expecting a quarterly delivery of vaccines and safe injection equipment for your district. You have already determined there is cold chain capacity to safely store the vaccines. You will now need to estimate storage requirements for the safe injection equipment and make sure these supplies are stored safely. Safe injection equipment consists of auto-disable AD syringes, reconstitution syringes, safety boxes, and any droppers for oral vaccines. At higher levels, and in certain countries, diluents may be considered safe injection equipment if they do not require refrigeration. WHO and UNICEF recommend that managers order this equipment when they order vaccines, a policy called bundling, so that the vaccines and safe injection equipment are always available together. Safe injection equipment is stored at ambient temperatures in dry storage. It can occupy a large amount of space, so it is important to make sure there is enough space allocated and that the equipment is stored safely. In this video, we will look at how to calculate the total storage requirements for the safe injection equipment, estimate how much dry storage capacity is available, and properly store the equipment. Your first step is to calculate the total storage volume required for the safe injection equipment. To do this, you will need to calculate the storage requirement for each type of equipment, then add these together for the total volume. Let us use this table to walk through the calculation. First, list the safe injection equipment, diluents and other supplies that you are ordering. Then, for each item, list the unit packed volume. This is the volume in cubic centimeters for each unit, such as a single syringe or safety box. This volume can vary depending on product and packaging. In this example, the unit packed volume of a safety box is 800 cubic centimeters. Your program may provide a table such as this one listing the unit volumes for commonly ordered safe injection equipment. You can also find this information in the WHO or UNICEF product information sheets. Next, record the expected quantity needed for each equipment type for the period. Here, the expected quarterly quantity of safety boxes needed is 3,000. Then, calculate the storage volume for each item by multiplying the unit packed volume by the quantity needed. Since storage capacity is typically given in cubic meters, divide by 1 million to convert the volume from cubic centimeters to cubic meters. In this example, if you multiply the unit packed volume of a safety box, 800 cubic centimeters, by the expected quantity of 3000, you get a storage volume of 2,400,000 cubic centimeters. Divide by 1 million to convert to cubic meters, and you get a total storage volume of 2.4 cubic meters. Once you repeat these steps for every item, add the volumes to get the total storage volume required. Next, estimate how much dry storage capacity you have available. You will need to determine the total volume in cubic meters available in each storeroom. Then you will subtract the total volume already occupied by existing equipment. To determine the total volume of a storeroom, multiply its width, length and height. If your room is 3 meters wide by 4 meters long by 3 meters high, multiply these dimensions to get a total storage volume of 36 cubic meters. If you have multiple storage facilities, repeat this calculation for each location to get the total storage capacity. Then estimate how much of the total volume is occupied by existing equipment and subtract this from the total capacity. If your existing safe injection equipment already occupies 3 cubic meters in the storeroom, you have 33 cubic meters of available space. To determine if you have adequate space for a new shipment, 
Compare the storage requirements to your current dry storage capacity. If you have ordered 15 cubic meters of equipment, that is less than the dry storage capacity, so you will have adequate room. Finally, you will need to appropriately store the safe injection equipment once it arrives. The storage conditions for safe injection equipment are more flexible than those for vaccines. Unlike vaccines, they can be stored at ambient temperatures. However, you will need to follow some general guidelines in order to avoid contaminating or wasting any materials. To keep the storeroom conditions clean and safe, you should keep the room dry and well ventilated, disinfect the area regularly, keep the room well lit and keep functional fire safety equipment available. To store equipment appropriately, you should stack cartons at least 10 centimeters off the floor, 30 centimeters away from the walls and other stacks, and no more than 2.5 meters high. Arrange cartons with arrows point up and with identification labels, expiry dates, and manufacturing dates clearly visible. Store latex products away from electric motors and fluorescent lights. And store equipment away from chemicals, flammable products, and hazardous materials. Organize the storeroom so that the existing safe injection equipment can be accessed and issued first and the incoming supplies can be easily stacked by category. Remember, it is important to review and reinforce these measures during supportive supervision visits. In this video, we reviewed key steps for managing safe injection equipment storage.